In WWDC 2022, Apple said that Swift UI is the best way to build an app. I don't fully agree, so let me explain. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love using Swift UI to build delightful user interfaces, but it's not the entire story. There are more technologies that are needed to create the best way to build an app. And I think that with iOS 17, we finally have everything we need to define a stack to build great iOS apps. You see, SwiftUI was introduced in WWDC 2019 as the new Swift-powered UI framework, leaving behind UIKit and its Objective-C-based API design. Specifically, this means that SwiftUI uses language features of Swift, like property wrappers, result builders, computed variables, generics, and much more. But the UI framework is only one part of the bigger picture of building apps. You also have to design the app's UI first, something traditionally done with a tool like Figma or Sketch. This is also slowly becoming obsolete for indie developers and side projects. Swift UI and Xcode's live preview allow you to create your designs with code, meaning that you can reduce two steps into one. This not only saves a lot of time, but also one more skill that just isn't needed anymore using design tools. Of course, the first few versions of SwiftUI have been pretty rough, without grids, proper navigation APIs, and many other small things that still needed to be bridged via UIKit, like programmatic scrolling, programmatic navigation, deep links, opening URLs, requesting App Store reviews, and so on. But we finally have reached a point at which most small to medium-sized projects don't need any UIKit code anymore, perhaps except for the occasional UI image if you want to load them from something like Firebase. So now you have a framework to design, implement and iterate on your app's UI. But you need data to show in that UI. So let's talk about Apple's newest framework next. During WWDC 2023, Apple finally announced a new framework that tons of developers like myself have been waiting for for years. It's called Swift Data. Up until iOS 16, Apple's first party persistent solution was Core Data. And while it is a very powerful framework with possible integrations for CloudKit and app groups, it tended to need a lot of overhead for saving, changing container settings, filtering fetch requests, and of course just creating your models with these model definition files. Swift Data simplified all of those issues. Mainly, and just like SwiftUI did, this new framework is once again built on top of the Swift language. Swift Data heavily uses Swift Macros, a brand new language feature announced at the same time. In Swift Data, macros are basically used like property wrappers most of the time. But they have way more power as they can generate code for you, something property wrappers obviously can't do. Swift Data for SwiftUI is also tightly integrated with the new Observation Framework, which seems to be replacing the parts of SwiftUI that previously relied on Combine. With UI and data persistence covered, you might think that's plenty of tools to build great apps, but that's not quite the case. Apps need to be monetized and might want some system capabilities like widgets, shortcuts or others. Now, obviously apps need to make money and unfortunately the days of paid upfront apps seem to be over. Instead, most successful apps are free and offer subscriptions or other in-app purchases. While StoreKit 1 was hard to get working correctly and often needed you to have your own backend server to validate the purchase receipts, all of that changed when Apple announced StoreKit 2. StoreKit 2 has single line APIs to fetch products purchase them, and as of iOS 17, even includes pre-built paywall views. And I believe that StoreKit 2 is plenty good enough to get you started, especially for MVPs, to just quickly validate an app idea. There is always the option to switch to something like RevenueCat, Adapti or Superwall, once your app gains some traction and you need to get your paywall to the next level. Before I tell you why I love the App Intense framework so much, let me quickly talk to you about NS User Activities, the previous system integration API. NS User Activities are actually still a super powerful and useful API and are being used across many different system services like Handoff and Deep Links. Most recently, 
Apple added support for quick notes to NS user activities, which allows users to deep link a node into their current activity in your app. Unfortunately though, this API isn't type safe and uses dictionaries instead of Swift structs to move around data. Instead, Apple is now building these system APIs with app intents. App intents are already being used in many different places and I'm sure that new functionality will get added to them over time as well. To break things down, here's how app intents work in general. They take in a list of parameters, either basic types like strings or custom types that conform to the app entity or app enum protocols. They do an action inside of the perform function and in the end they return a result or a dialog asking for more parameters. I personally just used app intents to build both configurable and interactive widgets. And then I was able to reuse those intents to make those actions discoverable in Shortcuts, Siri and Spotlight Search. This is the new first party stack to build great apps without a lot of work or external dependencies. Watch this video next to learn about an architecture for your SwiftUI and App Intense apps that gives you tons of system integrations for free.